Stevens-Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis are severe hypersensitivity reactions of the skin, most commonly due to medications. The difference between the two is primarily in the distribution. In Stevens-Johnson syndrome, typically less than 10% of the body surface area is affected, while in toxic epidermal necrolysis, more than 30% is affected, with values in between being considered an overlap of the two conditions. Medications are the trigger in over 50% of cases, reaching up to 95% of cases in 10. Most commonly, these are antibiotics, particularly sulfur drugs and amino penicillins. Other medications include anti-seizure medication and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Non-drug causes include infection, particularly with mycoplasma pneumoniae, but can be from general upper respiratory tract infections and ear infections. Other causes are graft versus host disease and even some vaccines, particularly smallpox. HIV and malignancies are also thought to increase the risk. Why these conditions develop is not entirely understood, but overall are thought to be immunological in nature. Stephen Johnson syndrome and 10 both feature detachment of the epidermis from the papillary dermis at the dermal-epidermal junction as a result of keratinocyte apoptosis. This is seen clinically as a maculopapular rash where a macule is a flat, discoloured part of skin and papules are raised bumps. There is also the development of bullae, which are fluid-filled sacs. This process is driven by cytotoxic CD8 T-cells, TNF-alpha, as well as interferon gamma. There are three main hypotheses for the underlying process leading to the apoptosis. The syndromes begin around three weeks after initiating the medication, but in cases without a precipitating drug, there is usually one of the risk factors that we've mentioned. Often it starts as a prodrome of fever, malaise, headaches, and keratoconjunctivitis. Then, a rash begins most commonly on the face or the upper torso, and the palms and the soles of the feet are often affected. Initially, the rash may be described as macules and papules that resemble target lesions, before then growing together into large bullae. Applying pressure to the epidermal layer leads to it easily sloughing off, known as Nikolsky's sign, leaving red and painful lesions. Mucosal involvement is prominent, which includes the eyes, oral cavity, and genitals. It even involves the respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, and kidneys, which is where there can be respiratory complications like pneumonia or glomerulonephritis. The diagnosis is made clinically, though it is confirmed through skin biopsy showing necrotic epithelium and keratinocyte apoptosis with detachment of the epidermal layer of the skin from the dermal layer. Differentials for Stevens-Johnson syndrome and early 10 can include viral exanthemas and other drug rashes and can be distinguished by the former being characterised by pain and sloughing. In severe or late 10, differentials can include toxic shock syndrome, which is more likely to include a macular rash on the palms and soles that progresses to desquamation over weeks. In children, staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome should be considered, which usually does not have a precipitating medication and spares the mucous membranes. These two would both feature positive blood cultures, while Stevens-Johnson syndrome and 10 typically do not isolate a microbe from the blood on cultures. Score 10 is a severity of illness score used to predict mortality in toxic epidermal necrolysis, with scores of 5 or above featuring a 90% mortality. These patients are often compared to Burns patients due to the significant fluid loss and electrolyte imbalances, to the extent that they are even admitted to burns units. Treatment includes removal of the precipitating cause, and supportive care is then the mainstay, including intravenous fluids and daily wound care. 
immunosuppressants like cyclosporin are an option because it in particular has been shown to inhibit cytotoxic CD8 T cells that are believed to play a main role in the pathogenesis. Plasmapheresis is another option to help reduce drug metabolites or antibodies. 